It starts to close it out in verse 14. Because, this is God speaking back, because he has set his love upon me. Do you see intimacy? Yeah. First we find the place, and then we learn to love him. We love him because he first loved us. You don't really know what love is until you meet him. Right. Let me tell you what love is. It wasn't the nails that held him on the cross mm -hmm. on this Good Friday. Mm -hmm. It was a bad Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We call it Good Friday. I'm like, why do they call it Good Friday? Because it was a good thing that Christ was hung up for our hang-ups. Right. Right. But if that's all that occurred, it would have been a bad Friday. And the devil's laughing and dancing with glee. And the Roman soldiers are like, we, we took care of this insurrectionist. Let's get the Jewish people back under control and domination. Let's just get things back to normal. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, not despising the shame. For the joy. Because he didn't just see the cross, he saw the resurrection. And when the devil thought he'd won the battle... It was a dark Friday, but Jesus knew Sunday was coming. <laughs> Up from the ground he arose. Amen. With all power and authority. And this is what he says. He says, all power and authority has been given unto me. And I give it unto you. In my name, go forth and preach the gospel. In his name. It's a place. Psalms 91 1. Psalms 94 114. It deals with intimacy because you've set your love upon him. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. What is the name? I'm glad you asked. Name in the Hebrew is the word Shem. It means authority, character, honor. Position, attribute. When you pray in his name, you're praying in his character. You're releasing into the earth his will so that it might be done in earth, in earthen vessels. See, this earth is going to burn up with the fervency of heat, right? It was washed away with the flood. It won't be water but fire next time. Right? Mm -hmm. God's not trying to, how do I say this? He didn't send Jesus to die for the earth. He said, we're going to get a new heaven and a new earth. That's already set up. You know, so all you tree huggers, God bless you. But Jesus didn't die for the trees. He died on a tree. That's right. That's it. He didn't say, oh my gosh, don't cut down the tree to crucify me. Just the opposite was the case. Right. Died on a tree. Jesus gathered wood and made them fit. Praise God for healthy earth. But let's not forget what Jesus died for. He died for people, not for trees. Okay? His name is a place. It is intimacy. And it's also a location to be entered into. We have to come into that place. Ephesians 5 1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God, dear children. A follower is an imitator or acts just like the one they're following. <clears throat> you know, there's an old movie, it was like, Here, here you know, follow me or Actually, the word was walk this way, and the guy's walking like this. <laughs> and the other guy's like, okay. He's walking with the limp, right? It's not what it meant <laughs> in that context. It was humorous. But in this context, it does. In this context, the Apostle Paul says, be ye followers of me. Imitate me, the Apostle Paul says, as I imitate Christ. Emulation is the highest form of praise. When you act like your heavenly father, Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. It's about walking like Jesus. 1 John 2, 6 says this. 1 John 2, 6. He 
who says he abides, remember the word abide, abide in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty? Mm -hmm. He who says he abides in Christ ought himself to walk just as Christ walked. Mm -hmm. This is what it is to pray and to live in his name. Isaiah 55 says in verse 11, so shall, this is God speaking, so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, yeah. it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Yeah. Scripture says, we believe, therefore we have spoken. You know where we've made our mistake? We speak it and then try to believe it. You know, I hear people say, well, if you just confess the word enough, confess the word enough. Well, there's nothing wrong because the word's truth. But why don't you ask the Lord to lead you to the scripture that applies to you in this specific moment. Yeah, yeah. And now it's not day old donuts, right. a regurgitation of the logos, right. hoping there's a rhema that pops across the... Right. But it's manna hot off the press. Yeah. Yeah. It's God breathed. And when you speak it, it comes to pass because it's his word that comes forth from your mouth. Instead of you and I'm asking him to bless it. Mm -hmm. Illustration, turn with me if you will, to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. The Acts of the Apostles. Or could it be better referred to as the Acts of the Holy Spirit flowing through the Apostles? Do you see when we emphasize the Acts of the Holy Spirit flowing through the Apostles? We no longer think it was because of the apostles. We now realize it's because of the Holy Spirit. And since you have the Holy Spirit, these signs will follow you that believe. The book of Acts is an example of what we too should do. Jesus says, greater works will you do than me. Wait a second. John 14, 12. We're going to do greater works than you, Jesus? Yes. Because I'm about to go die on a cross, be buried in a tomb, descend into hell, take the keys of death and hell from the devil, strip him of his authority, mm -hmm. lead captivity captive in a train, go spill my blood on the mercy seat in heaven, and I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. Greater works will you do, Steve, Greater works will you do, Debbie? Greater works will you do, Jim and Barbie? Yes. Greater works will you do, insert your name? Amen. I'll do greater works. Greater works will you do than me, because I go to the Father. If you ask anything in my name, in my character, mm -hmm. it pleases me to answer that prayer, he says. Here's the illustration, lockbox in heaven. When you go to the bank, they have banker boxes. Anybody, you don't have to tell me. I don't need to know about your banker box. I don't have one. That's true. I will when I get off federal parole. Okay, so here's the deal. It takes two keys to enter the banker box. The banker has one, and the owner has one. The banker can't open it without you, and you can't open it without the banker. Do you see the cooperation? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. When you go to the bank, you have to get the banker authority. They put in their key. Then you have to use your authority. And you put in your key, the door opens, and you can take out what's there. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with prayer. God has given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and what door you open, none can shut. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Right? Follow this. But what happens if you say, well, you know, I want to go pick up some money out of my banker box. You go to get the banker, and he puts his key in, and you put your key in, and you open it up.